Hey guys, so today we're checking out the Barricade HD rear bumper with the LED fog lights fitting all 2014 to 2021 Toyota Tundras. So this rear bumper will be great for the Tundra owner looking for a step up in protection and utility for the back end of their truck. Now this will fully wrap around the rear end and mesh very well with the body lines that were there from the previous bumper, offering a really snug fit as well as a really good look. Now this is going to offer a lot of protection made of a steel construction, which I'll get to in just a second, but that's going to be great for any Tundra owner who's looking for some more heavy duty protection for the back end of their truck, especially if they're looking to take it off road. Not to mention this will come with LED lighting in the kit, so if you're struggling with visibility out of the rear end of your truck, then this is gonna be a great option to take a look at. Now this will have a three millimeter heavy duty construction. This will be made of steel and it's also going to have a very aggressive black powder coat finish on top. It's gonna to do a great job at protecting the steel. Now the construction is gonna add a lot of protection to the back end of your truck and on the sides, it is going to be a pretty high clearance, making sure that your departure angles are not going to be compromised if you take your truck off road. Not to mention the black powder coat is going to match very well with any other heavy duty accessories you may already have on your Tundra and it's just going to add a very off-road and heavy duty look. Now you're also going to get some sporty angled cutouts on the center of the bumper, uh, which is going to add a little bit of a sporty look. And speaking of cutouts, you are gonna get the two on the side that I mentioned for better bed accessibility. Now those are also going to be dimpled, making sure you have a little bit of traction underneath your foot when hopping up and down uh, when you're accessing your bed. Now the most important two cutouts on this bumper are going to be right in the middle on either side. Those are going to be for the LED fog lights that you get in the kit. Now with this kit, you'll get two three inch high powered LED cube fog lights, uh, which will be a game changer when it comes to the rear end visibility out of your Tundra. Now these will be incredibly bright Cree LEDs with a white 6000K color temperature, making the lighting super crisp and super clean. Not to mention they are going to be IP67 rated, which is dust and waterproof. And they're also going to have a durable aluminum black powder coated housing and a polycarbonate lens. Now in a nutshell, these are going to be incredibly tough and perfect for the location considering that they are on the back of the bumper. So if you do take your truck off road and you come in contact with any branches or brush, they are going to hold up to that. Not to mention, this will also come with cutouts for your factory backup sensors and this rear bumper will work with your factory hitch, making sure that you can retain some of those factory features. Now, everything that you need to install this will be included in the kit, including the brackets, as well as a wiring harness for the lights, making the install super straightforward. Now, with all that being said, this rear bumper is going to come in at roughly $825, being one of the more affordable rear bumper options on the page. Now, I do really like the fact that this comes with lighting included in the kit as to where some of their options may not have cutouts um, or they may have cutouts but they don't include the lighting in the package. Not to mention this will have some sportier styling than some other options and offer a bit more when it comes to the factory capability. Now the only thing that it's missing would be a set of recovery points but if you're not necessarily concerned about that or if you're using your factory hitch as a recovery point then this is going to be a perfect setup for you. Now when it comes to install, this will be a two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, taking you roughly two hours to get the job done. Now one of our installers here is gonna show you how to get this onto your Tundra. So speaking of the install, let's jump into that now. Tools used for this installation, flat blade screwdriver, 3 8 ratchet, quarter inch drive ratchet, push clip removal tool, plastic panel tool, 12 and 13 millimeter ratcheting wrenches, 13 and 18 millimeter wrenches, assorted Allen wrenches from the kit, 18 millimeter, 19 millimeter swivel, 12 millimeter quarter inch drive, flex adapter, 3H electric impact gun. Hey guys, we're gonna watch a quick uninstall removing this bumper and then we'll jump right back into our installation. All right guys, the first to get our trailer hitch wiring harness plug done, just pinch here up top and pull it out. And then you can pinch these clips here these metal clips and push it forward. And it'll pop out just like that. And disconnecting your backup sensors is simply pinching this plug right here and backing it out. And you can do that for all four of them. All right guys, now to disconnect the wiring harness for the license plate lamps, it's a little bit tight working up in there and the little tab that you have to pinch to pull the plug out is very small. 
what's actually easier to do is you twist that whole wiring harness and pull the bulb out. And this little tab right here. Push down on that little pointy tab and the bulb will come off. All right guys, now we're underneath the driver's side here. Uh, underneath the bumper, you've got two locking pins here and a couple of bolts. And it's also a mirror image of this over on the passenger side. So go ahead and remove these. The center piece raises up and that unlocks the pin. You can pull it out like that. You're using a 12 millimeter socket, take out these two. All right guys, after you take your license plate off, there's a little lock pin right here you need to remove as well. And if the centerpiece comes out like it just did for me, all you gotta do is reinsert it back in, no problem. All right, now we need to pop this plastic centerpiece off to do that. Just kind of pull up on it a little bit and get a flat blade screwdriver underneath. There's some locking tabs. All right guys, then we're gonna pop this end cap off here as well. Just has these kind of pinch clips here that pop into these holes. That's all that's retaining this down. Once you have that off, we're gonna remove some of these lock clips here. If you don't have backup sensors, you're not gonna to have to do this next step, but in order for me to get at this sensor so I can unplug it from the wiring harness, we're gonna to have to remove these locking pins and kind of pull this plastic cover piece back so I can get at that. Again, if you don't have the rear backup sensor, don't do what I'm about to show you here. All right guys, there's one more lock pin underneath here that we're gonna take out. And that should allow us to pull this back and expose the wiring harness right there. Again, just pinch the tab and pull it back like that. All right guys, now we're gonna re remove these bolts up here. These are also 12 millimeter. Some of these closer to the tailgate here are a little tight. You might want a swivel socket like I have on here. And for these that are awfully close, I'm gonna use a smaller hand wrench. And because of the tight clearance right here, guys, another tool you might want to try is if you have a ratcheting wrench, go ahead and use that.
All right, guys, now pull your bumper end cap off. Now, we're still gonna have some wiring attached here. Now I flip this around upside down. We're gonna undo these two bolts and a, this plastic clip. We should be able to get this cap off. There's a wiring harness tucked in here that we're gonna have to unplug uh, so that we can get this piece off of the truck. Again, 12 mil millimeter socket for these. Now there's a little retaining clip right here, guys. We're just gonna pinch the ends in, pop that out, pull back the shell. This one's tucked in here pretty good. I'm gonna use some needle nose pliers so I can get a pinch on it. All right, guys, so we can continue. I'm just gonna grab up our wiring harnesses here and just kind of tuck them back out of the way for the next steps. And everything we showed you here, go ahead and repeat that on the passenger side. We're also gonna remove these brackets right here. We're not gonna need this for the installation of this HD replacement bumper. Again, using a 12 millimeter socket, these, we're gonna release these two nuts here and the bolts are basically attached to this plate. and do the same thing on the other side. So now we got our stock bumper off, we're gonna work on our new bumper here. We're gonna to to do some table work. We're gonna install our fog lights. We're gonna install our backup um, sensors and we're going to install our trailer hitch connector. So we're gonna get started and jump right into this installation. First thing we're gonna do is assemble our fog light and we're gonna put our bracket on. We have two Allen head bolts and two nuts. So what we're gonna do is we're going to Drop our nut down in there and get it to sit. Take our other one and drop that in place and get them to sit. Once I get them to sit where they need to go, I'm gonna install our bracket, put it through. Once we got our bracket in place, what I'm gonna do is take the Allen heads that are supplied in the kit with the Allen wrench that's supplied in the kit. Line the hole up, get this one started over here. Do the same on the other side. Just snug them up, not make them super tight so we can adjust them once we get them on our bumper. And like that, and then you're gonna to wanna to just repeat the same procedure on the other light. So next, we're going to take our sensors that were in our bumper. We're gonna take these and we're gonna take the plug that is supplied in the kit. We're gonna slide that down in place, push it through. And we're gonna be able to take our sensors, push them down inside like that. And then with the screws that they are supplied in the kit, we're gonna install them. That'll keep the sensor from coming out. And then we'll just tighten them up with our Allen heads and that'll keep our sensor in. Now you're just gonna to wanna to repeat the same procedure on all the rest of the sensors. Next, we're gonna install our tag light. And what we're gonna do with this tag light, they pretty much just give you a basic light with a black wire and a, and a red wire, which is your hot and your ground. 
So what you want to do is you're going to want to find your tag light harness on your vehicle and you're going to want to splice these two in. Now in our vehicle, since we're going to be removing this, I'm not going to go in and cut into our wiring harness. I'm just going to make it so that you understand that you have your hot wire, which is this wire, and your negative, which is that. And you're going to want to just take a test light onto your wires on your vehicle and find those two wires and either use connectors to uh, crimp into them or, or just tie into them in general. Now, to install this, you're just going to want to feed your wires through. And then all it does is push into place. Just like that. And we'll just get that out of the way for now. Next thing we're going to install is we're going to take our trailer hitch. Uh, or receiver that, that for our plugs for uh, towing a trailer. And, and with these two clamps, we're going to just take this, put it through, push it up in. The clamps will lock into place and it will stay right where it's supposed to be. Next, we're going to install our fog lights into our bumper. So now we're going to install the fog light that we assembled previously. I'm going to take the wire connector, stick it up through, and fish that through a while, then I'm going to take the silver bolt that they supplied with the Allen head bolts, slide that up in place, and get it into the slot underneath there and hold it up. I'm going to take my flat washer, lock washer, nut, come from the back side here, install that on, and put the nut on. get it in place like that. I'm going to take my 13 millimeter, slide it in here to hold the nut. I'm going to take my 13 millimeter ratcheting wrench and get up top. And then I have that tight. Now you're going to want to just repeat the same procedure on the other side. So now that we have our bumper assembled on our bench, we're going to go and start installing our brackets on the back of our truck. We're going to be able to remove these four bolts here. And if you want, before you take them out, if you want to put a jack underneath the trailer hitch the, just to hold it up, support it, you can. I'm not going to do that. There's still one or two bolts that are holding this up. So I'm going to remove these four and I'm going to install our bracket. Now our brackets are marked, one with a D and one with a P, D for driver side for passenger side and then we're going to install these just like this and get them in place and then we're going to do that same procedure on the other side so i'm going to take my 19 millimeter and start removing our bolts now i'm going to take my 19 millimeter on my impact gun and remove these four bolts So now we're going to take our bracket. You're going to notice our bracket has a cutout in it. That cutout's going to go right around this part of the uh, trailer hitch. And then we're going to reinstall the bracket using our factory hardware. So I'm going to take it and put it up in place. And get a couple of our bolts started. Reinstall the other ones. These, this bracket is slotted, so it moves for adjustment this way in and out. So I'm going to kind of try to sit it in the middle and straight up. I'm going to re. I'm going to grab my 19 millimeter swivel here. I'm going to pull it out about halfway and get it straight. And then I'm going to snug them up. I'm 
I'm not gonna go crazy right now with tightening them because we might have to adjust them once we get the bumper on, see where the bumper sits as far as how it fits to the body. And then you're gonna to wanna to just repeat the same procedure on the opposite side. So now we have our brackets on. We're gonna take and install our bumper. I have Ben here gonna give me a hand. It's pretty heavy. We're gonna start a couple of our bolts and just get them started. Then we'll go back underneath and tighten them up. Now that we have our bolts started, we'll lift the truck up, get underneath it, and tighten our bolts up. So now I'm gonna take my 18 millimeter on my ratchet, tighten up our two bumper bolts. We got one down here, and we have one up top. Now you're gonna to wanna to just repeat that same procedure on the opposite side. So now we have our bumper bolts all tight. You're gonna to wanna to reinstall all your connectors for your sensors. I have them all hanging here. You can just fish these through, plug these in to your connectors in the bumper. Also, this is your tag light. So this is the wire, the two wires here that we're gonna to have to splice our two wires from our tag light into and reinstall and plug in our trailer connection. And once you have all that done, then we can start working on plugging in our fog lights and running our harness for that. Now that we have our bumper tight, we're going to run our harness for our fog lights. So I'm gonna fish it through the vehicle, back to the back here. And then once I get it back, I'm gonna connect it. And then we'll finish fishing it through the front. And on this vehicle, we're not going to wire tie it up, but you're gonna to wanna to do that. And I'll call that out as we go along. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna fish it above the frame to drop it down. So I'm gonna pull enough wire so that I can tuck it up inside here. And I'm gonna tuck it up in here and come on this side here. And then I'm gonna connect it to our fog lights harness there. And now you're gonna to wanna to tie this up with wire ties. And then we're gonna come over to this one and do the same. And at that point there, I would get some probably black wire ties, tie this up. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that anywhere you run these wires are not a pinch point, nor are they near the exhaust so they can't melt. I'm gonna fish them up the driver's side of the vehicle and on the outer side of the frame rail. I'm gonna tie them up along there where they're not gonna get pinched or they're not gonna have any heat near them so that they melt. So as you can see on our vehicle, I tucked it up here by the frame. Now on top of the frame, there are some holes. So what you're gonna to wanna to do on your vehicle is use some wire ties to tighten this up and, and tuck it up real nice. That's what I would do. I'd have it and, and I'd use pretty good amount of wire ties to keep it nice and neat all the way through. I fished it all along the frame up into the back there and I'm gonna go out on the, uh, go on the outside of the frame rail on this vehicle and I'm gonna run it up to the front and then fish it up through our engine compartment and then we'll start uh, our installation of hooking up our battery hot and ground. So now I'm, I fished it through all that. Now up in here I'm gonna tuck it up in. There is an e-brake cable, emergency brake cable that runs along here on the outer side of the frame. I'm gonna be able to run it along that and like I said again on your vehicle you're gonna to want to wire tie it up. I'm gonna put it up in place here. I probably would end up wire tying it up to 
Mm. E-brake cable, it's a good spot to do it. I'm gonna fish it through the frame up here and then start getting ready to fish it through the engine compartment and, and get it up. Now when you go through the engine compartment up here, you're gonna wanna make sure that you do not get it near the exhaust or anything that's hot. Um, and we don't want it to melt. So we're just gonna fish it back through here, pull it through. I'll tuck that back up in a second. Get it through here first and then we'll tuck it up. So now I'm gonna fish my harness up through here so that I can lift the hood up then and reach up and pull it through. Once I get it up to that point, I'm gonna lower the truck down, open the hood, then I can pull it up through and then we can wire tie it against the uh, wheel well as we go up into getting to our battery. Next, that we got our harness up to our engine compartment. I fished it along inside here so it's not near the exhaust. And again, you're gonna wanna wire tie this all up from the front to the back. Use as many wire ties as you have to to get this nice and tucked in. We have our relay here, which you could mount right here if you wanted to use a self-tapper. Or you could remove this bolt right here, which would be our ground, and you could put your relay right to that. On this vehicle, since we're gonna be removing this, I'm not gonna install that or drill holes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up our positive and negative here to our battery. So I'm gonna take my 12 millimeter, remove these two nuts, and then install our two hot and ground wires. Now that we have those two installed, we're going to take our switch wire. I'm gonna route it back along here and in our jam right here up above our windshield. Um, because this vehicle doesn't have too many access holes, you could cut a hole, put a grommet in, run it through that way. On this vehicle, I'm gonna fish it through the jam come through the jam, which won't affect anything because it's only gonna be the rubber seal that touches the wire, and then we'll fish it into our dash and, and find a mounting location. Now I'm gonna fish our wiring through here, through this, and then go into our jam. Like I said before, the only thing that will touch it will be the rubber seal in here, which should be fine. So first thing I did was remove our rubber seal here, fish our wire back through here, get it down into this spot here. Then I can put my seal back in place, just like that. And I'm gonna take my plastic clip tool, pull my fender out a little bit, and fish the wire behind the fender. just like that. You still can move your wire and we'll fish it inside the vehicle and I'll show you how to put that into your plastic. I'm gonna take my clip tool, we're gonna remove this panel, we're gonna fish our wire down through here, put it down and then we can bring our switch up through and then we'll have a spot to mount it. So I'm gonna remove this with my clip tool Now that I have that out of the way, I'm gonna take my wire, fish it down through here, 
go down into this slot here, and that'll give me access to fish it down through and come up through the dash. I'm gonna give it plenty of slack in the jam here and tuck this behind the Now once we have that in place, I'll put my panel back on. And as long as you leave plenty of slack in the jam here, like that with this wire, the only thing that's gonna touch it is this rubber seal. It'll shut and it'll push it down. You shouldn't have any issues with it there. If you want to put a hole in your firewall with a, with a hole saw, to come through with a grommet to fish it through that way. That's even a better way to do it, but on our vehicle, we're not gonna cut that up. So now that we fished our wire through, I have my switch to turn the rear fog lights on and off. Just gonna pull the backing off. And I'm gonna mount our switch right here. If you have any kind of alcohol rub to clean any kind of uh, grease or wax or anything off of it. It's not a bad idea. I'm going to push it make sure it's on and then it's pretty much just a simple on and off for it to work. That wraps up this review and install of our Barricade HD rear bumper with LED fog lights for 14 and newer Tundras. Thanks for watching and for all things Tundra keep it right here at ExtremeTerrain.com.